Hello there, this is Magnetism Lesson 1. F equals B-I-L, or F equals Bill. So, a bit of a recap from GCC, the motor effect, first of all. When a current carrying conductor, carrying electric current, is placed in a magnetic field, it'll experience a force. Uh, that is provided that the conductor is not placed parallel to the field lines. So there's the magnetic field which goes north to south, current carrying conductor. The current, remember, is always positive to negative. And in this instance, if you remember the left-hand rule, Fleming's left-hand rule, which I'll cover in a moment, the wire would experience a force upwards. And it's called the motor effect. If we change the direction of the current, we would experience a force downwards. Remember to pause at any point to make any notes. So a bit of a recap, the force increases if strength of the magnetic field is increased, use a stronger magnet, or more flux density. Simply could increase the current. And remember the direction of the force is reversed if either the direction of the current or the direction of the magnetic field is reversed, which becomes apparent if you use the Fleming's left-hand rule, and then just simply reverse the direction of the field or reverse the direction of the current, and you can see that the force will change direction completely. So Fleming's left-hand motor rule. So there it is, if you can't remember it, from GCSE. The first finger is the field. Remember, magnetic fields are from north to south. And the current is always positive to negative, or plus to minus. And the thumb simply gives the direction of the force. They're all perpendicular to each other, they're all at 90 degrees to each other. Let's move on. So, force on a current carrying conductor. The equation. Force is equal to... Bill, B-I-L. So this is in the GCC specification. Let's have a quick recap. Force, obviously measured in newtons. Length, obviously in meters. Current, obviously in amps. B, magnetic field strength or magnetic flux density. Tesla. Another unit, if you see it, which we'll cover in more detail in a, in a subsequent lesson. One Tesla is equivalent to one Weber per meter square. The same thing. Weber per meter square. So F equals Bill. B is the magnetic flux density or the magnetic field strength. It's measured in Tesla and the equivalent is Weber per meter square. Tesla is the SI unit. So let's move on. Remember the component for the current carrying conductor, the component that we're looking at must be perpendicular to the magnetic field. And if you just look at the left hand rule, you'll notice that when it's in its position, the, the thumb, the first finger and the second finger are all perpendicular to each other. So what would happen to this equation if you want to write it down? So this equation we would look at this vertical component as that is perpendicular to the direction of the B field, the magnetic field. So if we had this angle, for example, theta, then our equation would be F equals Bill, but we would want the perpendicular component. So it would be Bill sine theta. However, if we had this angle at the top, this one, then the perpendicular component would be adjacent to that angle. So our equation would be F equals Bill cos theta. So it's not automatically one or the other. You have to look at the orientation of the angle with respect to your diagram. So it could be this one, or it could be this one. Okay, let's move on. 
So first question, so let's pause and have a go. Calculate the force exerted on a eight centimeter of wire when it carries a current of 200 milliamps at right angles to a field of magnetic flux density, 20 millitesla. Because it's at right angles, it's perpendicular. There's no angle, so it's just simply F equals BIO. So F equals Bill. And then just simply put the numbers in. So magnetic flux density is 20 millitesla, so 20 times 10 to the minus three. Multiplied by the current, in this instance, 200 milliamps, so 200 times 10 to the minus three. Multiplied by the length, eight centimeters, so 0 0.08 meters equals, that gives us a force of 3.2 times 10 to the minus four newtons. Hopefully that went okay. Let's have a look at the next one. So you're going to pause and have a go. A current carrying conductor of length 3.6 centimeters is placed in a uniform magnetic field of flux density 50 micro tesla. The conductor is, is at an angle of 25 degrees to the field, as shown in the diagram. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the force on the conductor when the current flowing is 7.2 amps. So first of all, we want this component as it's perpendicular to the field. So it will be F equals bill. We've got this angle at the bottom. It's opposite the angle, so it'd be sine theta. So let's do F equals bill. Sine theta, or sine 25. Let's put some numbers in. So B is 50 times 10 to the minus 6. Multiplied by the current, which is 7.2 amps. Multiplied by the length, which is 3.6 centimeters. So 0 0.036 meters. Multiplied by sine of the angle, sine 25 and that gives us a force if we calculate it of 5.5 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons hopefully that went okay let's move on so for this one let's read this out first a wire lies perpendicular perpendicularly, it's an odd word, across a horizontal uniform magnetic field of flux density 20 times 10 to the minus 3 tesla, so that 0 0.3 metres of the wire is effectively subjected to the field. If the force exerted on this length of wire due to a current is 30 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons downward, what is the current in the wire? I would also like to calculate the direction of the current, so is it Q to P or P to Q? So let's pause and have a go. So in this instance, we can find the current First of all, so we've got F equals bill that we're going to simply rearrange to find the current, which is force divided by BL. So current is force divided by B times L. And if you put that in your calculator, in fact, let's get the numbers in first. So it's 30 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by and then times these two together, so it's 20 times 10 to the minus 3 for the magnetic field strength. And the length is 0 0.3 meters. So that gives a current of 5 amps. So then we just need the direction. If you use your left hand rule, your first finger will point north to south. And then you need to point your, you need to rotate your hand and have your thumb pointing downwards. So your first finger. We'll point this way. Your thumb will point downwards because that's the direction that it moves. It says the force is exerted downwards. So what that will do is leave your second finger pointing in this direction, which is Q to P, and that will be the direction of the current. So the direction of the current is Q to P. Hopefully that went okay. Now let's try another one. Good question this one, so let's pause and have a go. A copper rod has a radius of 15 millimeters. A current of 60 amps passes through it. The density of copper is 8.9 times 10 to 3 kilograms per cubic meter. There should be a minus there for per, just so you know. 
Calculate the value of the magnetic flux density of the magnetic field required to support the weight of this copper pipe. So a bit of a tricky one, but what we can do is realize that the magnetic force would counteract the weight of the object. So we can do F equals bill, so BIL, and make that force equal to the weight because they must be equal yet opposite. So we don't have mass and we don't have length, but we can replace mass for density times volume. Mass is density times volume. And then volume is the cross-sectional area multiplied by the length. So we can substitute the volume into the mass, well, the density times volume, and then substitute into the BIL equals mg, which I'm going to do now. So BIL equals mg, but instead of m, we've got density times volume. So I've got density times volume, but instead of volume, we've got area times length. So area times length times g. And what you find is that the lengths cancel. Okay. And the magnetic flux density b is equal to rho density, which we know, times the cross-sectional area, which you can find out from the radius, multiplied by g, which is just 9.81, divided by the current i, which is also known. So, let's get the area first. So, area is pi r, uh, pi r squared. So very straightforward. So, we just need to do 15 millimeters, 15 times 10 to the minus 3. Square that value, and then times it by pi. And that gives an area of 7.07 .07 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. When you do the calculation, they'll use the full value. So I'll just write that. So 7.07 .07 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters. And then substitute into this equation on the left. So the magnetic flux density is equal to the density, so 8.9 times 10 to the 3, or 8,900, multiplied by the area, which is this number, so I'll just leave that there, and then multiply that, so 8,900 times the 7.07 .07 .07 times 10 to the minus 4 times 9.81, and then divide, simply divide that by the current, which is 60 amps. So if you put all that into your calculator, you should get 1.03 Tesla. That's actually a very strong magnetic field. Some MRI scanners might be this high, but they typically run maybe 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 Tesla. So 1.03 will be a strong magnetic field, which makes sense if we're going to levitate a you know a copper rod. Right, let's try one more question. Hopefully that went okay. So a bit of a tricky one if you want to pause and have a go. A current of 8 amps is passed through a copper conductor of length of 0.4 meters and a cross-sectional area of 2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared. The conductor contains 7.5 times 10 to the 28 free electrons per cubic meter. The conductor is at right angles to a B field of flux density 0.25 Tesla. Subsequently it experiences a magnetic force. Calculate the average force acting on a single electron. So first of all, let's get the force acting on the entire rod. So that would just simply be F equals BIL. So F equals BIL. So B is 0.25 Tesla. Multiplied by the current, which is 8 amps. Multiplied by the length, 0 0.4 meters. And that gives us a force that's acting on the entire rod of 0 0.8 newtons. And then what we should do is find the, the volume of rod that we have. After I've done this, I'm going to clear the screen to make some room. So make sure this is written down. So volume is cross-sectional area times length. So this is straightforward. The cross-sectional area is given. It's 2 times 10 to the minus 6. Multiplied by the length, which is 0 0.4 meters. So that gives us a volume 
of 8 times 10 to the minus 7. 8 times 10 to the minus 7 meters cubed. So make sure they're written down. Make some room. So we've got 7.5 times 10 to the 28 electrons per cubic meter. So let's have a look at what we need to do, obviously, is find out how many electrons there is in our copper conductor. So we've got, I found this easy to write it like this, we've got 7.5 times 10 to the 28 free electrons per cubic meter. So what we need to do is multiply by the volume that we have. 8 times 10 to the minus 7 meters cubed. The meters cubed cancel. And we're left simply with the number of free electrons. Which is 6 times 10 to the power of 22 electrons in total. We know the total force that we figured out earlier is 0 0.8 newtons. So to get the force acting on each individual electron, we simply need to do the total force divided by the number of electrons. So that would be 0 0.8 newtons divided by the number of electrons, which you just calculated, 6 times 10 to the 22. And that gives us an average force on each electron of 1.3 recurring times 10 to the minus 23 newtons. I hope that lesson went okay. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.